Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Life is Tiff Knows It. Tiff here, bringing you another whipping chat. Um, yeah, hopefully you are having a great morning, great afternoon, great evening. I'm currently filming this on a Thursday morning. My four-year-old is currently at a summer camp preschool class, so I get the uh, morning to diamond paint. Um, I just realized, though, it's going to be really kind of hard to reach over like this. So, hmm, I think I'm going to shift the diamond painting over uh, slightly. This is a very small kit, as you can see. I did an unboxing recently of this kit. It is from Michaels. It's the um, Maker's, why do I always mess up the name of it? Maker's Market, I think is what it's, the brand. It is, I believe, um, after listening to Diamond Diamonds and Washi's video, it, um, it sounds like it is marketed from Diamond Dots is the parent company, but still a little bit of a mystery. It's definitely a budget-friendly kit. Um, it cost me $12. So it's so funny because my daughter, she's four, and she has taken over this kit and then will just randomly give me permission to work on it. And she told me that she, she kind of like wants me to... Um, she wants to control what I do when she's at preschool. So she she told me to work on her diamond painting. And hey, I'm going to take advantage of that. I'll totally work on this diamond painting. Uh, for some reason, these drills, they just like don't work well with the wax that I have in my pen. I don't know. I might need to add more wax. But yeah, I wasn't having trouble um, picking up the other drills on the other kit I'm currently working on, which is also a small size kit. So, I don't know. We will, we shall see. And um, the placement's a little wonky here because she's four. And I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I'm currently working on. Um, what are you working on? Are you doing a diamond painting currently? When you watch my whip and chats, do you do other things? Like, I'm always curious. I, um, a lot of times when I watch whip and chats, I am cleaning. <laughs> Or doing other things, wishing I could diamond paint. So I'm living vicariously in the moment. <laughs> so let's see. Um, I'll talk about diamond painting related things first in my channel. It is the end of June. I it's oh, I always feel so sad when the end of June is approaching because it just kind of represents that summer break is like halfway over, and I have to start gearing up for work slightly. Um, but it is what it is. July still will have so many fun things and I'm going to be probably focusing less on making, um, traditional videos. I did that per request of, from a poll. However, I just, I think because I'm gearing up to get back to work, I'm just going to focus on making content I really enjoy. And that might look a, like a little bit different. Like I am going to start um, doing more just like content around mental health um, and mindfulness and kind of just things that uh, I'm resonating with that I want to just like share with you. And I hope that's okay. Like I've talked a lot in the past about like trying to find meaning and uh, generosity and giving back to the world and sometimes it's really hard for me to to figure out how to do that um without it being overwhelming and so I figure you know I can do it by what I put out into the world I want to be really intentional about that um because it's important to me so there might be a little bit of a switch in the YouTube shorts videos I make and I will still be doing whipping chats um, in July, it'll probably be weekly, but I might look at doing it like um, once every couple of weeks, once the school year starts. So I'm kind of just playing that, you know, kind of kicking that idea around in my head of what other content could I make. If I'm working on these smaller diamond paintings, I can probably do more post reviews 
and unboxings, um, which I do really, I, I enjoy those videos a lot. Um, and they probably, they tend to get a little bit more views as well. So, but we'll, we'll see. So there are some things, just stay tuned for different things through my channel. Um, and I also am just kind of like itching to do some more creative stuff with diamond painting. So, uh, I'm going to be doing some videos about greeting cards that I'm making people. And I, I'm so excited. I just went to, um, Hobby Lobby, which I, I probably should have gone to Joann's or Michael's, but Hobby Lobby was convenient and I picked up some really cool, um, Oh, why can't I think of it? I want to say scratch paper, but that's not right. Um, scrap book. There we go. My brain was getting there. Scrapbook paper. And I'm just like playing around with making um, greeting cards with that incorporate um, really cool scrapbook paper and printing letters and messages on the card. Um, hold on. I'm going to pause for a second. Oh, and I'm super crooked here uh, to get more wax. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm set now. Um, I was talking about greeting cards. So I'm just, I want to um, use diamond painting as like a border for cool greeting cards that have cool messages because I was doing some DIY stuff with um, the Diamond Dots canvas before and I was doing some lettering. Lettering I have to be in a certain mood to want to do, uh, create diamond painted letters. And sometimes they don't look as clear as I want them to, or I can't make long messages on a small space. So I, yeah, I did make a card. I think I'm going to, I, what I did is I, um, instead of printing something, I just wrote it hand made, like it was just printed from me, like writing. And I don't think I'm going to do that again. I think I'm going to actually print it to make it look um, fancy. So, but there'll be more stuff like that. I'm going to be doing like kind of a tutorial on how to make those. Because I personally think that that's really cool. Like I want to do like more um, creative stuff with diamond painting. So, Yeah takes a little bit of the monotony out. Sometimes I love the monotony and sometimes I just, I, I wouldn't say I'm bored of it. I'm just wanting, I'm craving a, to use a different part of my brain. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, one thing I just like a funny random thing that I didn't share that happened last week is that, um, I was eating at Freddy's and Freddy's, I don't know how well known it is. It's a chain. Um, hamburger chain. In fact, it sounds really good. In fact, maybe I'll take my daughter to Freddy's when I pick her up from preschool because she, oh my gosh, did the wax just fall right out? Shh, guys. Um, she really has been into milkshakes lately and I feel there's worse things in the world than a milkshake. So I'm going to, that sounds good. I think we're going to go to Freddy's. Anyway, I was waiting for my food and I was witnessing the most awkward interview ever. I just was like dumbfounded by this lady. So it was this, this manager, this guy that was interviewing this lady and she was just so entitled. She's like, I will not wear jeans. I will not do this. And you, do you guys have a bathroom? Because if so, I will, I will need to change every day. It's like, you're asking if like a place has a bathroom. Like that's so strange. And then I really hope that the manager did not hire her. Like he, he seemed to be this type of person that like seemed, I don't know, like bewildered by her. Like, oh, okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Like, like frightened of her. And she was having all these demands and I just, I've never, I don't know. Like, it's just so funny to see. I would never go into a job interview feeling like so entitled to things like ridiculous things like demanding that she wears her own like attire to work like it was so bizarre and then the interview was over she um she was like 
looking over his shoulder saying, no, 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 you wrote my phone number wrong. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, and then she's like, I need to use the restroom. And so he like tells her the restroom code and she's like, uh, yeah, I'm not going to remember that. You need to open the door for me. <laughs> oh, I kind of just want to go back there and I just hope that she's, I, I don't know. I've seen stranger things and is it really my business who they hire? No, but oh my goodness. That was just such a strange experience to witness <laughs> and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, other things that happened this week. Let's see. It's been a weird week for me. I'll be completely honest. It hasn't been the best week. Like, this happens to me at the end of June. It, it just, I feel that, um, and I've talked about this before. So hopefully I'm not too repetitive on my, um, whipping chats, but for me, it's really hard to, to work in a job where you're just overwhelmed all the time, overwhelmed constantly like expected to do so many things and then just for it to stop and like I I'm starting to kind of go a little like I don't know if I'd say stir crazy because I haven't been just like staying at home but like I need something to do I need something to do like diamond painting is super helpful but it kind of goes into like my next um thing that happened this week so <laughs> I, I haven't been diamond painting a huge amount. Like last year, I think I was diamond painting more because, well, I don't know. Last year, I had this issue that I couldn't diamond paint around Denise because she, um, she would get into the diamonds and it would just, it wouldn't be relaxing, right? That's like the point of diamond painting. But this year, Denise... She totally is okay around it. She's She even, like, sometimes, like, wants to do it with me. She's completed one. It's just different. But she... One thing that I'm really, like, focusing on this summer is, like, the reason I stayed in this career... Oh, uh, one of the reasons is because of summers off. And I'm recognizing, more so this year than any other that like time is so precious um and i want to spend quality time with my daughter i want to do things like go to the zoo go to parks go swimming and so that has been my goal like i don't really want this summer to be just her watching tv and me just diamond painting and us not connecting and not communicating and not doing fun things like it's super important to me and so I have let that guided me and I really don't diamond paint much during the day. Um, I'd say an hour tops. And it's usually like when she's waking up and I'm waking up, I don't have the energy to do stuff. So she's on my phone playing games, which is not the best. And I'm watching usually whip and chats from other people and diamond painting for an hour. And I was getting really close to getting done with the friends kit. And I, I really just wanted to diamond paint it a little bit more. And she made this comment. And I know she's only four. But she told me, you diamond paint too much and you don't listen to me. And I don't know. It just like stung so badly because like I'm trying so hard to not diamond paint too much. And to do fun things with her. Like from nine in the morning or 10 in the morning until six at night. My rule has been, I am not gonna be on my phone. I am not going to let her just like watch TV and me do my own thing. Like we are doing things together. And so when she said that, it just like broke my heart. Like I, I know, like she even said later, she didn't even mean it. Like I think she was just mad because I was, I at that point in time, I was trying to get this diamond painting done she was outside and I was, I lost my temper and I was frustrated because every time I'd sit down to diamond paint, she'd ask me to do some, like to help her with these worms and then she'd get dirt all over. And I should have recognized that, you know what, this is not, 
I need to put my diamond painting away. And so I did snap at her. And I think I just am working on letting go of, like, when I make a mistake. Um, I'm human. And diamond painting is a hobby of mine. It's something I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel with. And, you know, I put some pressure on myself. And I don't, I don't want me doing a hobby that I love to get in the way of me connecting with my kid. So I don't know. I thought I would talk about it because it's just, it happened a couple days ago and I'm still thinking about it. And she's at preschool right now and she told me to diamond paint. So um, I'm not feeling like bad diamond painting now. And I, since then, I don't, I just haven't really been diamond painting much when she's around. Um, I'll diamond paint when she goes to bed. Yeah, sometimes. And yeah, I've just kind of slowed down my diamond painting. And I'm okay with that. Um, especially these smaller kits, because I'm still getting things done. But I, has anybody, like, for all the diamond painting friends that diamond paint as well, because I'm assuming most of the people who watch this are diamond painters, have you ever gotten, like, feedback from people in your life that, like, diamond painting, you're diamond painting too much, or um, it's gotten in the way with connecting with people? I'm curious if that's ever happened to you guys. Um, and I think it's just I need to tweak what I do, even though I thought I did. Like, that's the thing is I really, like, felt like I have not been diamond painting much. So, you know, but it, it's not a critique to diamond painting. And I'm, of course, still going to diamond paint. Uh, I was just curious. Man, the hurtful... Four-year-olds, man, they're they're honest, and I, I guess I'm just hurt because I'm afraid it's true. Like that's a big insecurity I have, is um, that I don't that I do this too much, and I'm missing opportunities to connect with the niece. Even though I don't think that's true, especially this summer. Okay, where did I put my cutting thing? My yada yada. <laughs> I'm so clear with what I say. Oh, I see it. I'm going to just walk over here really quick. So I'm not editing too many parts of this video. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do in this whip and chat, let me see. Um, yeah, I think the other thing that I was just going to talk about really quick before I get into the tag questions is kind of just this idea that in the end of June, I just think too much Look how big this section is. Denise helped me with this. She wanted these sections on her diamond painting. I think too much. I think and I think and I think and I overthink and I like things to do, which is like why I think it's been so hard because I've been diamond painting less. Like I have been not doing as many things and just um, thinking too much. And so a goal of mine is I'm going to try to be more mindful and kind of like learn. I'm trying to learn how to meditate, honestly, how to just be mindful and in the moment. And wow, this is such a weird material, by the way. Um, sorry, um, meditating and just not thinking and overthinking and worrying. I've been struggling some with anxiety lately, so interesting the cover on this is so much thicker than like an uh, other diamond paintings that I've I've diamond painted okay so the other big thing with this video is I was gonna do the tag questions that have been floating around I cannot oh my gosh I'm so sorry I will make sure to put the original person who did the tag questions in the description box and tag her. I'm sorry, my brain is a bit foggy, so I can't think of her name currently. But um, I did watch part of her video, and thank you for making these tag questions because, um, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of tag questions either. I haven't seen them for a long time anyway, so this is great. This is awesome. So these tag questions, there's 25 of them and then a bonus one. So the first question is how many diamond paintings have you completed? Okay, so 
I wish that I have, I had logged like all of them, like diamonds and washi. But if I, because I don't have an like exact number, but if I were to guess, I would say I've completed between 15 and 20 diamond paintings. A lot of them are smaller sized. And some of them have been just like um, those DIY things like greeting cards that I've made and different things. So, yep, 15 to 20 of them. Let's see. What's the next question? Um, how many diamond paintings do you currently have in your stash? I currently have, if you include greeting cards, I don't know. If you include greeting cards... I have probably about 10. If you don't include greeting cards, I have six. So, not a huge stash. It's bigger actually than I want. I've talked about this before. I don't really like having a stash because, oh, I forgot the section so big. I put this on here. Um, honestly, it backfires for me. It makes me feel, oh gosh, so sticky. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It makes me feel, um, good Lord, guilty. Like I need to get these done. It puts too much pressure on me and I'm not, not a fan. I am personally not a fan of stashes. I have no problems with people who like stashes, have big stashes. In fact, I watch stash videos a lot, but ugh, it's not my jam. I know, I know it's falling out. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so sticky. Oh my God. <gasps> Holy crap. Holy crap. Okay, so this kit gets a A plus for stickiness. Wow. Wow. Diamond Dots is not that sticky. Um, okay, next question. Number three, when did you begin diamond painting? I began diamond painting in October of 2020. I did so because of a Facebook ad. It was for a diamond art club. And it, I had to watch it a couple times for me to marinate on it. First I thought, oh, those look kind of tacky. <laughs> um, to be completely honest. I thought this is like bedazzled. Uh, but look where I'm at now. I think they look great, honestly. I think it was just, I didn't like the particular diamond painting in that ad. Okay, number four. If you could only purchase one diamond painting com from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? Ugh. That's so hard. Um, probably Diamond Art Club. I'm sure that's probably a very common response. Because the quality is there. I know what to expect. I like that there's a sticker sheet. Um... I like the quality of the diamonds. I think the rendering is great. Uh, I appreciate that they support artists the way artists should be supported. But I also, I mean, I also think I haven't had the opportunity to try a lot of other companies. I want to branch out and purchase more. That's why I'm trying to get through my stash. Um, Craftably was okay like honestly in full transparency i felt a little i felt like craftably's um or no not craftably crafties crafties i wish that the quality would have been a little higher diy moon shop i liked as well like i love their kits you know like um i love their selection but i struggled a little bit with diy moon shop because the round diamonds were smaller and it took longer so I don't know. There's pluses and minuses to all companies, but I'd probably go with Diamond Art Club if I had to pick from one. That's that's the uh, company that I've used most. Okay, number five. When diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. It kind of depends on my mood, but a lot of times it is YouTube and it's whip and chats um crafting with shay listen to diamonds and washi rachel ray i think rachel ray is my favorite <laughs> um but sometimes 
I also like to watch Netflix stuff. It depends, too, on, like, if Denise is around. Um, I do like watching, like, forensic files type things. Although, I'm doing that less, and I'm okay with that. Because I think... I don't know how good that is for me. Yeah, it depends. I If I weren't making this whip and chat right now, and I was diamond painting, I would probably be listening to an audiobook that I am currently listening to it's a, it's called stop getting in your own way so I do like to consume a lot of um, self-help audiobooks and uh, Brene Brown is my favorite author and audiobook Con like I love Atlas of the Heart I just finished Dare to Lead um, Braving the Wilderness those are amazing to me and this this book um, that I'm currently reading is really good as well so, yeah, it just depends on my mood. Depends on where I'm at, too. I was in a coffee shop yesterday, and I was just really vibing on the music that's playing in there. So, yeah. Okay, number six. What is your favorite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. Oh, well, I would say probably landscapes. I That's a tricky question for me because... I like the result of landscapes. Like, I think that they are beautiful, but sometimes they are hard to work on. Um, like, all the confetti. Like, I would consider this to be a landscape. And, um, yeah, I do like landscapes. I also do, like, animal ones. Um, most of what I've completed are landscapes, though. The more I think about it. Landscapes with an animal. <laughs> Alright, next question is, what is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from? Well, it's a tie because I don't think I have completed a diamond painting from multiple artists. I believe I might have another Deborah Malcolm diamond painting in my stash. So, if that's true, it'd probably be Deborah Malcolm. Um, and then I want to complete more Chuck Pinson's. Those are intense, but I think one of the most prettiest diamond paintings that I'm most proud of is, um, A Moment on Memory Lane by Chuck Pinson. So I'd like to do more Chuck Pinson ones. Let's see. What is the artist you own most diamond paintings from? Ah, like, well, I already answered that. Probably Deborah Malcolm. If I do, in fact, have two from her. I'm not terribly sure. They do look similar. But I did just finish my Deborah Malcolm. It was Aurora Beauty from Diamond Art Club. Uh, what, let's see. Number nine. What is your go-to wax when diamond painting? Um, Typically the wax that the diamond painting comes with. Like, I did buy some putty, and I did enjoy it. Um, and honestly, I'm just lazy, and I didn't want to go upstairs and grab it. I just wanted to get this done while I have time, because uh, time is definitely very limited for me, because i got to pick up my daughter soon. Let's see. G is my next symbol. Number 10, what do you do with your finished diamond paintings? Do you hang them, put them in a portfolio, something else? I hang them for the most part, or I give them as gifts. I frame them, and I hang them. I have diamond paintings all around my house, and I love them. And I really, I think one thing I'm so grateful for is my husband does seem to like them too. Like, um, yeah. So... I think they're beautiful, and I, I personally feel that if I'm putting hours and hours of work into something, I want to see it, and I'm proud of it, but I know everybody's different, and I do think there are some diamond paintings that are worthy to be hung and not worthy to be hung, and if it's not like an image that you like, that makes sense to put in a portfolio. I have not really encountered like a diamond painting I really don't like. Um... I guess, like, feelings-wise, it reminds me of, like, the time in my life when I was working on it. So there's kind of some ugh, ick feelings with that. But, yep, I hang them up. I frame them. I recently did a video on, instead of buying a frame, painting the border. 
And I think that looks really nice. And then you can just hang it up um, with some tacks. Because, I don't know, sometimes the frame is more expensive than the diamond painting, you know? Especially depending on the dimensions of the diamond painting. All right. Number 11. Do you open kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you're ready to work on them? I open them right away, but it's more so to do unboxings. Um... Yeah, there is one only one kit that I do not have opened. Well, including greeting cards, a couple. Because I'm waiting to do unboxings with them. And the unboxings is kind of like when I'm feeling a little burnt out or I don't know what type of video to make. So I kind of try to keep an emergency stock of unboxings that I can do or if it's like seasonal. So for example, I have a... Christmas kit that my husband bought me after Christmas. So I'm most likely going to do an unboxing of it in July for Christmas in July. And then I will um, work on it probably in November, depending on if I have a major whip going at that time. Because drills and chills will be done by then. Drills and chills is something I've done every year. I haven't completed it every year, like, on time, but I do enjoy drills and chills. All right. Um, number 12, what is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own but hope to one day? Oh, man. <sighs> Probably, um, there's, there's, I don't know the artist, but, oh, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Anything that's like a major landscape that involves a lake and a boat. Like, for some reason, like that sounds very um, calming to me. It reminds me of my dad. And yeah. So it's very mood dependent what my unicorn kit is, to be honest <laughs> with you. There's also one from Treasure. Is it Treasure Studios Art? Or Treasure Art Studios. It's this like um, shipwreck. And underneath there is like all the stuff going on, on um, below the ocean. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Next question. What is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on? Ooh. There is an owl that I got from uh, Crafties. It is extremely confetti heavy, but it's gonna look beautiful. I'm so excited. I did do an unboxing of it. I'll try to link it in the description box if I think about it. That one I'm excited to do. I'm excited for this like cityscape one because it's a um, square kit. So both of those excite me for sure. For sure, for sure. All right. Um, number. It's hard to. Number 14. Do you prefer confetti, color blocking, or a mix? Uh, I like a mix. Probably more color blocking because it goes faster. But I do like a mix. Too much confetti kind of, um, I don't know, takes away my mojo a little bit. But a lot of times I do have kits that have a lot of confetti. So, I don't know. The The result of the confetti is so beautiful. I got it. You got to remember that. Number 15. How do you pick which piece you want to work on next? It's just so random. I think um, some of them I have just prepped. And so logically, it makes the most sense to do that kit next because I've done a video like, for example, the landscape video or the landscape diamond painting. Um, it's like a Chicago landscape. It's also from Crafties. I did a, a video about washi tape and so it has washi tape on it. And so, yeah, that makes sense to do next. And it's smaller. It really depends on my mood. A lot of times it is to balance a kit that I did before. Like I did a huge, that Deborah Malcolm kit was huge. So I've been really wanting to do just small kits lately. 
Um, and it also depends on like the time of the year because uh, the summertime is when I can probably produce the most videos realistically. And so if I could do these smaller kits and do more post reviews, that makes sense. So it depends on my mood. It depends on my channel. It depends on lots of things. Number uh, 16. What is your favorite season holiday to diamond paint from? I've always really liked diamond painting in the fall. And I like fall themed kits. Um, for sure, for sure. And I think that's because I started diamond painting in the fall. And it's just super nostalgic for me. Like, I think I enjoyed diamond painting the most when I started. Uh, not saying I don't enjoy it now. But it was just it was very exciting and new um, back then. So, yeah. I... There's just something about diamond painting in the fall and working on fall kits is my, my jam for sure. Number 17, do you work on one kit at a time or multiple whips at once? <laughs> um, well, currently I have multiple whips. Most of the time, it's like half and half. Um... For the past year, I've been just doing one kit at a time, but right now I have two, kind of because Denise wanted to do one, and then I thought, well, if she doesn't want me to work on one, I need one to work on. So I currently have two whips going, and I've done two whips in the past. There's definitely pluses and minuses to juggling, too. Also, if I have a giant kit, a lot of times... It's counterintuitive, but like I don't like to have two kits if I have a giant kit because I want to just focus on getting the one done. Some people are the complete opposite of that, though. <laughs> um, number 18, neutral dark pieces or colorful pieces? I definitely like colorful, for sure. Uh, I learned that the hard way. I was working on a kit... Um, called Doors of Moria. It's from DIY Moon Shop. Uh, and it took me forever because I think I just didn't really enjoy the colors of the kit. There's so many browns and neutral colors in it that it was just, it's hard to distinguish, number one. And number two, it, yeah, it just kind of got ugh, drab and old. I like color. I like different colors. Okay, number 19, large pieces or snack size pieces. I'm currently liking snack size. I like the final products of large pieces, but they, yeah, I think it depends on the piece too. It depends on like the last question, really. Um, I was getting really tired of the color scheme in the last kit I was doing. So if there's a variation in color, I'm good. Uh, the next big piece that I might, I'm probably going to work on is this mason jar kit with these really pretty flowers. So I think I'm going to enjoy that a lot. Um, number 19 or 20. Place diamonds with tweezers or a pen? Definitely a pen. And I'm doing a lot more multi-placing nowadays than I used to. 21 squares or rounds. Oh, it's so hard. I really like squares. And I think most of my kits are round. And so that's a little bit of a bummer. Squares, however, are very hard to place. I get very particular and critique myself with my placing of squares, unfortunately. Um... So there's a plus and minus to both. Like there is an ease in um, round, but I personally think that um, square ones are just a little bit more enjoyable to work on. And I used to think that square ones looked better completed, but with this um, last kit that I did that was square, I didn't really see, I didn't really notice a huge difference um, in a square finish versus a round. So 
22. What is your favorite method of placing AB drills? <sighs> um, I guess it depends on like where they're placed in the kit. But I do like to, just like um, with other drills, I like to multi-place. Um, they're harder. AB drills are harder to place for sure because they take the wax right out of the thing. So sometimes I will single place AB drills if I think that they're, like I recently put putty or wax in, I think it's gonna pull them out, pull out all that putty and wax. So I'm not a fan of loading pens. So any opportunity to avoid that, I'm good. I'm good with that. Um, 23, what is your preferred method of sectioning off canvas? I really do like this thin washi tape. I think that's great. Um, and then I use this as a way to cut off the section one at a time. I used to use... Um, cover binders but I don't I just cut it off um, because I don't know cover binders are cute but they sometimes just kind of get in the way it, it depends on my mood I'm sure I could go back to cover binders I do enjoy them sometimes but currently I just like to section off my diamond painting with thin washi tape and cut it off one section at a time I will say that these, I find little sheets of this everywhere and I just throw it away. <laughs> um, do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? I do. I like to loom knit. I haven't done it for a while. I used to have a whole Etsy shop where I sold loom knitted hats. And at the time, that, was, that served me really well. I think... Anytime you're in a business, it's hard to um, not personalize things when you get critiques. And I didn't get a ton of critiques on my hats, but um, I used to also make jewelry. And jewelry making is kind of just like complex. And some people just like don't like what you make. Um, so... Yeah, I do like to loom knit from time to time. I do, like I'm making these greeting cards. I like to be creative with like paper sometimes. Like not origami. I'm not a fan of origami. I'm not good at origami. It stresses me out. But making greeting cards. And I also have done things like, um, like decoupage type things. I used to do, I'm interested in yeah it I like to make things for people let's see okay almost done with these questions these are great questions um number 25 who do you want to tag in this video I will probably uh tag uh pencil surprises and diamond painting with sweet tea <laughs> uh and if they want to do it great and no pressure if they don't that's totally okay as well and then the bonus question, if you still have it, show us your first diamond painting you ever completed. I do have it. I do. Okay, I'm going to get it. In fact, I'll just walk you over to it. Okay, don't mind my kind of dirty house. Walking along. It's hanging up right here. And it's still one of my favorites. Now, I understand that this probably is not legally licensed, and that's heartbreaking to me but I didn't know it at the time and I'm choosing to forgive myself um with that so I still really love it I um wish that it was a little bit bigger because you can't even really tell that these are people and I could have gotten it I think in a bigger size it was off of Amazon yeah but super nostalgic amazing piece like this is my jam of the type of diamond paintings that I like to complete so I will head back over. There's just diamond paintings everywhere in my house. Woo, there's the finished. You're my lobster one. And then I might as well just show you other ones I've done. Here's um, the Central Perk one I did last summer. So yeah. And then this is my, <laughs> don't mind my messy house. Um, the whip that I'm working on now. I'm going to end with a quote. So my quote, it's really um, short. It says, you are too smart to be standing in your own way. And oftentimes, 
I do that by overthinking or doubting myself and I'm tired of it and I don't want to do that anymore. And I hope that you don't do it to yourself. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video.